Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest today. Actually, not just a guest. We have an entire freaking team here from the Moonzy team. Um, we They're taking time out of their busy schedule to come out here and really give us a rundown on a really fun project that I think that's like really cool. It kind of touches on a little more than just the normal PFP and everything like that. The coolest part about it is it's a project that you can actually play with your friends and have fun, but you can also play with your family. And I think that's something that's really important that they've touched on. It's an, it's, it's not like most of the PTEs and all that kind of stuff and all these kind of gaming are a little bit too, you know, advanced for any, for like, you know, most people that are under the age of like 10, but this one is just so easy that you just throw a phone into a kid's hand and you'd be able to play with your kids. So I'm going to let the team go ahead and talk about it right now. I'm go around and introduce yourselves. So, um, yeah, I'm zero cool. I'm one of the advisors and I'm here hosting them at the Gajera AMA, but let's let, let the team talk a little bit. Yeah, maybe I'll start first. <laughs> a big shout out to Godzilla fam here, man. Thanks, Zero Cool, for getting us on board. I'm really excited. <laughs> My name is Phil. I'm in charge of the marketing for Moonzy. My role includes strategizing, planning, and executing basically any marketing related stuff. So let's pass the mic. <laughs> Yo, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, hi. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm Jace. And, uh, I'm the uh, art director and a uh, creative director of Moonzy. I design all the artwork. I came up with the, the, the design, uh, all, mainly all the traits and all. And uh, yep. Who's next? Also makes really awesome TikTok videos. I watched the. <laughs> I watched. The, I, I was. I was recently when I was going through to compiling some information. I saw. I was watching the Naruto Mirror Run one, and I was oh, yeah. laughing so hard about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. I love that one. <laughs> so all right, so okay, next. Go ahead, um, Jax. Ken, Jax, or Ken. Ken, Jax. Okay, uh, okay. Hi, uh, tech director. Uh, yeah. So I'm interested in like smart contracts, economics, website design. That's why um like this wide ranging skill sets allow me to like lead the execution of Munsi. And also we have a we have a team of developers, uh, game developers that uh that are not here today. Um, but um, we work together hand in hands to make sure like Munsi uh, works. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Jax, you want to go ahead and go? I'm leaving. I'm. I'm not. I'm usually I'd go to the girls first because it's proper. But I think save the best for last, which is the two girls because they bring the freaking vibe. So go ahead, Jax, <laughs> and then we'll okay. get you Toro uh, and Mojo Jojo up here. Yeah. So I'll go next. Uh, my name is Jax. Uh, I'm the head mod in Munsi. So basically what I do is I manage the community, uh, basically uh, to make sure that the engagement level is high, everyone is having a real good time, everyone is just vibing in our community, and uh, I make sure everyone has fun. <laughs> so it. that's my role. So maybe I can pass the mic to Mojo. Go ahead. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Mojo, so I'll retweet whatever Jack say. <laughs> so I'm also the head mod and I'm also in charge of like the Discord activities and matters and etc. Anything got to do with Discord, me and Jax are the one in charge of it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Everything whatever Jack say, I've, it's all covered by him. Retweet, like and share please, Mojo. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Hi everyone, I kind of lost my phone. Chitor, I think your your mic is breaking up. We can't really hear you. Um. So hi, I'm Chitoro. Hello, hello. Yeah. So I said I'm Chitoro. Um. I'm the marketing lead. So I actually manage the communication between brands. Awesome. Gosh, it's so awesome. It's just a. A real honor and it kind of speaks volumes to what the you know how much the team cares to when they bring everybody out here so that every single question can be answered and i really do appreciate that and oftentimes when i do advisory roles i have to kind of coach the team and be like hey listen okay you need to make sure this person this person this person's there and and um, all that good stuff and this team like literally the first time they showed up for an ama they had the entire team and i was like okay well I guess i don't have to coach too too much but um phil if you want to go ahead and just kind of give like a little like rundown and kind of give us a little overview of what's uh what what moonzy is all about sure so moonzy is a play and earn battle royale game where we focus on the play uh earn is like a bonus right and where users can customize their moonzy nft with over 300 or adorable traits and abilities to win. Moonzy NFTs 
are all fully animated and they are assembled by hand. So individually exported by Jace himself, 5,000 or 5,555. User are able to passively earn Moon Gem, which are the in-game currencies and act as the main token of values in the Moonzi ecosystem. Uh, this can be used to purchase in-game assets, upgrading and summoning, which can actually greatly enhance the gameplay. And I mean, the most bonus thing is to trade for liquidity. <laughs> yeah, awesome. so that's the summary. Yeah, just a summary. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So like I just dropped a, a link in there. And like one of the cool things about Moonsy is that the the kind of the vibe that you guys have created and um, curated in the in the Discord. And it's like a really special thing. And I do appreciate it, you know, with all the karaoke and all the games and all the fun stuff and just making it more interactive. And on top of that, the Moonsy NFT itself is super interactive, engaging. It's much more beyond than just a staking or a PFP project, which is kind of not very um, interactive at all. It's kind of just like, oh, cool. Nice. Um, uh, nice PFP. Cool. Uh, oh, cool. You just click stake and you paid your, you know, you paid your uh, gas fee and then your stuff is staked and earning. But this one is like so interactive and so engaging and it's even good for the family. So it's like a lot of fun. So what's kind of the, um, behind, like, what's the story behind Moonsy? Like, t talk about like why it's called Moonsy and all that. Yo, for this, maybe I can answer. Yep. So, um, Moonsy is basically a, a moon inside onesies. So, why we did, we came up with this name? Because we know, like, um, everyone in the crypto space love moon, right? So, what if uh, all of us are as as precious as you know, like moon, you know? So, uh, and and onesie we all know come different uh, forms of uh, shape, design can be anything. So, we want our um design to be versatile, to be adaptable, and uh, you know, never our trend, that kind of thing. So that's how we came up with the uh. The, the name Moonzi. Yeah, and our in, uh, biggest inspiration came out from the fact that, you know, uh, you know how during COVID, uh, there are people in some country, they are stuck and they cannot go out how, uh, get, out, get out of the house and um, they can only make a living, you know, playing uh, play to e games, that kind of thing. So um, we felt that that was quite a, a, a big, noble thing. So, um, but in, instead of just P2E, why not do it just play and earn, meaning you uh, focus more on the play element. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And like, I have a question for you though. Like, you know, so as like a, you know, doing TikToks and doing Instagram a bunch, what kind of led you to the NFT space? Like, were you already in the NFT space or was there something that kind of like, was like, Hey man, like I kind of want to start a, you know, you know, to do art for an NFT project. Right. Uh, so for me, I, I, when I was young, I, I love watching animations, anime, you know, cartoon. And uh, it was my dream to, uh, you know, make animation movies one day for like, example you know like disney like pixar that kind of thing so i in fact i studied animation for like a good four to five years and i actually did manage to you know uh, uh kind of make a living or like work around it much about animation then uh, until you know there's an opportunity of nft and then i met uh darwin i met ken then we thought like why not uh, we can do work something about it and i mean nft is is really uh the future you know so uh yeah that's how we came up with the idea and hopefully you know for moonzi we can uh um make it into an ip you know like a brand a global brand and it's not just um just nft we can uh blend uh blend into web 2 you know or like uh you know nintendo maybe you know like a nintendo uh what uh sega of web 3 that kind of thing so yep yeah very cool and do you guys have any plans of uh so it's, it's currently it's only on it's only going to be on mobile is that correct uh, uh, yeah, our, our game is going to be on mobile. It's going to be something that you can play on the go and make money on the go. And of course, the game is not just for um, people who are on the NFT. Uh, it's also for casual gamers so that we can have more players as well. But of course, if you own the NFT, you are able to earn the moon gems. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good idea. I mean, the, uh, I think that one of the best ways to onboard the most amount of people in the gaming world is to have a phone because at this point you know it's like even i look around when i'm you know uh just walking around town and all that kind of stuff and i see kids walking around with phones it's like kind of like amazing that like before it was such a privilege to have you know a smartphone and only adults had it and now it's like kids are having them so you know it's it's becoming like almost like a gaming console for them and they're not gate kept by you know uh, oh you have to own a ps5 or own oh you have to own a computer or you have to own a you know uh, an xbox or a nintendo and stuff like that and so on top of that this makes it really like easy to like go around so like the kids are sitting in the back of this the car just like kind of like yammering away and be like hey just play your damn moonsy game you know <laughs> so i think it's exactly. a great idea and, 
yeah, yes. and our game, our main game is uh, actually just uh, we have the battle. Other than battle royal, we have also mini games. Mini games can be uh played by you know other Discord channel, can play by even the public like kids. And we are hoping that it will be the you know the next um top mobile game. You know um just like think of it as Brawl Star, you know Titan Arena that kind of thing. Yeah, kids love them, family, uh, adults love them, and it's a, it's a so basically a social game. So you, uh, a game is only fun when you have friends, right? So our game is made to um make friends and have fun. It's awesome. So is it really easy to be able to play with other people? You just kind of like start a game and then you add your friends in there and you kind of just run around and do your moonsy thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Is it possible in the future, like when you guys release it out, is it possible for you to maybe have it be like a, you know, kind of like rumble cards and, and stuff like that where you people could play for whitelists and other, you know, and other projects? Yeah, that's one of our, our main uh, focus as well. You know, uh, some Discord channel actually uses game, mobile game to um, uh, to to grind whitelist that kind of thing. So uh, why not adapt our game? Our game is going to be uh, you you can use it to uh, earn whitelist, moon gems, etc. So uh, for now we have uh, our we call it the knockout royal and uh, like stumble guys. And uh, next we also going to have like you know um cut uh also smash cards that kind of thing. Yeah, all these mini games. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's awesome. So, um, w with the Moonsy NFT itself, how many trades do you have? You know, like a uh, like roughly like how many do you have? Because I'm kind of curious. Because there's a the supply is five thousand five hundred fifty five, but um, like how kind of unique are each? Or uh, I guess what I'm asking is like how e unique is each uh, NFT gonna be? Because sometimes you know with projects that don't have too many traits, it's kind of like you feel like oh you got you like you have some NFTs that look exactly like other people's. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. I uh, just okay. I can answer this. Uh. Yeah. We have uh thirty over uh, different kind of onesies. So um, uh, and we have uh more than twelve uh, legendary. And our main uh, uh iconic. You see this drone. You see. Look at my my profile picture while I'm talking right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, that drone. You know. So we have twelve different design. It's uh twelve horoscope. So the one with um the one uh beside this dino um onesie is actually a uh, Capricorn. So we have you know all the twelve horoscope and all of the twelve different horoscope they are actually a uh, part of the game as well. They are considered rare as an NFT. If you have it in NFT, it's considered rare. And uh, if in the game itself, it's actually part of like a passive attack. Awesome, very cool. Um, so another thing that I was gonna ask is when. So when is the mint? Is June first correct? And do you guys have a mint price that you could let everyone know about yet? Yeah, for this I can take it. So yeah, we gonna um we're actually gonna announce it today on our Discord. So our um min is finalized, it's on first June and our min price is gonna be zero point zero nine nine. Oh awesome. That's good. It's 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 nice to know that it's gonna be affordable. I mean it's no secret and it's you know you know the the elephant in the room is really big and you know the current state of the market is it's it's a bit it's a bit frustrating but i think that when you have it coming out with projects obviously you know mid advisor here and we all kind of had this and the, one of the best parts about working with this team is just the ability to kind of be like you know take advice and work around it and make sure that you guys still get your vision going through but also kind of are, are smart about it and i think that's like a really an amazing thing and point zero point uh, zero nine is definitely super affordable even in these times and this is kind of like one of those things where um i love investing in projects that actually have stuff going on and you guys already have gameplay is that correct that's right. So, uh, like what you mentioned, uh, investment. So, what you guys gonna invest is not just uh, you know, the NFT. You're investing into this whole uh, game, this whole ecosystem that we are building, and yeah, there's a lot more we we are building actually. Uh, you know, think of it as like a uh, Animal Crossing. You can able to have your own house, to have your own space, and you can meet friends to socialize in this uh NFT space. I love that, and that's like a big big part about the NFT space that's really kept me around and made me really excited for it. It's just the whole social aspect. And it's kind of funny, you know, people are like, oh, you want to pay this much money to like have a community, be a part of a community. It's it's not really like that. It's it's more about just meeting people around the world. And it's just like so amazing that, you know, I, I would never have this opportunity to be talking to people from Singapore and from, you know, that whole other side of the world and be, you know, actually like vibing with you guys. And we have a lot in common, even though there's so many cultural differences and, you know, sometimes there's a language barrier, but you guys all speak English. But, you know, it's like it's just like such a really cool thing. And I love that you guys are kind of harping on that social aspect. And I think that's 
definitely something that a lot of projects need to start doing because community is everything. And when you guys spent a lot of time and a lot of money in, uh, before Mint ever happened to cultivate a really tight knit community, and I think that's like the, one of the smartest ways to go about it. Definitely. So yeah, uh, ultimately, community is our top priority, and uh, we believe in having a tight community and a very united community because. No, no matter where you go, these people are gonna stick with you, right? And um, yeah, our head uh, mod will know the best. <laughs> we play games every day, and the, the, even the way we structured the Discord is a very gamish kind of thing. Where uh, even our the way our blessing is made is uh, revolve around our horoscope, and we play games almost uh, I mean two or three, three, three times a day sometimes. And the yeah, that's one of the reasons why we have a closed Discord because we want to make sure that our community is tight. Yeah, it's awesome. Yes, Jax. Yeah, I was gonna say, can you like pop in and maybe <laughs> tell us some like fun stories or anything that you guys have been doing, you know, inside the Discord? Yes, of course, definitely. So we actually have been doing a lot of things. Uh, in fact, I have lost track of how many games we actually play. So, uh, like what Jace mentioned, uh, in our Discord, we actually have twelve different blessings. So each blessing is actually named after a horoscope. So we have the blessing of Gemini. We have the blessing of Pisces. Uh, the blessing of Scorpius. So in total, that's 12 of them. And each of these blessings will actually correspond to an activity. And as long as you actually achieve four different blessings, uh, you actually be moonlisted, uh, which is what we call the whitelist in our community. Uh, so you just need to achieve four. So because of that, we actually run a lot of events, a lot of games. Uh, we have rap battles. Uh, we have uh, smash cards. We have stumble guys. Uh, we have karaoke, which is a very huge hit in the Asian community, like everyone that I know loves to sing karaoke. And then uh, we did a lot of games. We have like I Spy, we have Trivia, a lot of those fun stuff as well. That's awesome. Very cool. And I heard a little rumor that Jace even comes and does karaoke. Is that correct? Yeah, I do sing sometimes. <laughs> in real life, I sing a lot. <laughs> so I try to join them as much as possible while, you know, I'm ready, waiting for my art to export, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Are we gonna, are we gonna do, are we, is there a good karaoke bar in Singapore that we're gonna go to? Yeah, definitely. When you're here, I will bring you around. <laughs> oh, yes, I can't wait. <laughs> Oh, I, the best. I will make sure you you end up like tutorial where you you don't have a very sore voice. It's <laughs> <laughs> her loss of voice. That's why she's like, oh, she can't really speak that much today. So like, we'll make sure you 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 lose your voice as well when you come to Singapore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I had I had a call with tutorial yesterday, and her voice is really husky. Oh, yeah, I'm so, I'm so sorry. Three voice guys. <laughs> so I I yeah. Oh man, that's so funny. So tell us a little bit. Uh, when I saw the video, you know, of the meetup, I thought that was so cool, and it's like kind of amazing that you guys haven't even minted yet, and you're already getting, you know, seventy, eighty to almost to a hundred some people plus for uh, in real life meetups. Like, can you guys tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, you know, Singapore is really small. We only have a population of like seven million, but we have managed to gather uh, at least hundred people, almost. 200 in fact uh close to 200 after that when we count but some people actually end up just came and then they, they, they didn't even register you know they just walk in that kind of thing so actually we are almost hitting 200 so we were very happy we have a very supportive local community yeah that's awesome that's and awesome. Yeah, yeah the the whole the whole idea of like really meet up with our uh, local community is to really thank them and then like for supporting us and we, we actually went to talk to every single one of them try to talk to, to, to let them understand what our, our projects about and what they are uh you know rooting for that kind of thing to really to build this community uh from our roots awesome yeah and it was really a great event so uh like what jace mentioned the purpose of our event is to get to know our community and let the community know us. And to be honest, we were just shocked by the response. And uh, some of them even brought their kids along. And it's like so adorable. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun emceeing and hosting every one of them. I mean, like, we just wanted, like, um, especially, like, I mean, we are a local project, like Singapore project. So we wanted, like, our local community to be, like, you know, really involved in our, our project and just like a tight community as well. In fact, guys, those who are listening, if you guys see the brand video, uh, our event video, you can see uh, Mojo in our onesie, our custom made onesie. <laughs> I was just about to ask about yeah. that. That's that's that. Uh, I was making sure that was Mojo in that because it looks um, it looks like she was having so much fun, and it's like the the onesie is actually so adorable. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, I really had so much fun hosting everyone and emceeing. And the little kids were so cute. Like, I mean, we gave out like white lists as well, and then like we throw some quizzes. Everyone was like, I mean, like everyone's just spontaneous, and everyone's just doing like you know like cheering, and it was like. I mean, it was a really, really good event. I didn't like, you know, I've been to like quite a lot of like um, projects, events and stuff. But like, I felt like this event was really a really good one. That's, that's yeah. awesome. That's, that's, that's... So can people actually get those onesies somehow? Uh, you can't get it anywhere uh, because we custom made it. But we are planning to uh, release them to all our holders. <laughs> That's awesome. And do you guys have, so I saw some, you know, merch that you guys are wearing. Are you guys going to have a merch uh, line that's going to come out? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And in fact, we had this idea in mind that, uh, you know, uh, once we successfully mint out, we are going to don our onesie and rate the NY, uh, NFT NYC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so wait, are you guys going to be there? Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to be at NFT NYC as well. So I will see you there first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll bring you a onesie so uh, you know this whole moonzie will be uh, all in the full of onesie. <laughs> oh my god, just imagine my like the so I'm going with a bunch of my real life friends um who are into NFTs as well that I'm traveling that live in the same state as me. I could just imagine me like walking out of my hotel room, like knocking on their hotel room door and being like in a onesie, being like, You guys ready to go to the conference? They just put like, a look on their face. <laughs> yeah. Oh so my god. That's, that's, that's... That's really what our community is about. It's about the the fun, you know. Yeah, and that's like the cool thing. It's like the in this day and age that we live in, people they like care so much about like appearances and all this kind of stuff, and like just like and I think that like you know like you know wearing a like a onesie to like a thing, some people would be like you know, oh like people are gonna look at me, the people are gonna laugh at me, but like it's really not about that. Like with um with moonzy it's more about like having fun and like you know put, putting smiles on their faces and that's kind of something that's like really kind of drawn me towards this project and kept me like you know excited about it because you know sometimes people like will work with the team for a couple months and they're kind of just like all right ready to mint out let's, let's move on i'm kind of done with this but like I, I feel like rick and myself is getting more excited and more amped for this project as it's gone by because some of the stuff that you guys have been doing, because like you guys do all this production stuff in house, correct? Like you know, putting on that the Moonzy, the video and all that stuff. Yeah. So we, in fact, we actually have this vision that next year, uh, in the NFT NYC, we can have our own people, everyone playing our game as well. You can have them, uh, do it, doing uh, playing the battle royale, playing the mini game, while donning the onesie, you know. Yeah, we're gonna take over NYC. <laughs> So sorry for interrupting Zoroku, could you guys get Chuturo back up? I have no idea why she dropped down to the audience. <laughs> of course. Um... And yeah, sorry to cut you, interrupt you guys. Yeah, cool! Chuturo, welcome back! Yeah, welcome right. back! We know that you can't talk, but we know that you uh, love to talk, and you know you have an amazing voice and you bring the energy, and we just love having you up here on the stage. I'm like playing the video right now for the... Um, uh, on like the so the people can see it that are watching this YouTube video for later and I love that that Moonzy gear is just like so clean already even Rick I'm not even kidding like I'm gonna have to out Rick here really quick because like Rick even messaged me and goes yo the actually the merch for Moonzy is pretty awesome I'm gonna have to get some of that stuff and like for Rick to say that <laughs> oh man you guys have no idea how big of a deal that is I expect to get some airdrop to me in my mailbox. Okay. <laughs> so nice to address full, full docs to us. <laughs> yeah, consider that done. <laughs> Hell yeah. That, that brand video. It docks you my sizing. <laughs> it docks your sizing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's like the deepest t form of doxing is like, you know, finding out your shirt size and all that kind of stuff. Wow, that's like next level doxing. Awesome. Well, um,. I would like you guys, if you guys want to like tell in anything else about it, I can ask some more questions and we can bring some people up here if they want to ask questions. And I think, you know, we, some people, you know, if you guys come up and ask some good questions and are really interactive, then, you know, we're going to definitely bestow some of these whitelist spots that we have set aside for this AMA to some people. So start uh, requesting to speak or in the voice chat, go ahead and ask some questions so we can ask them. But, you know, if you guys want to talk about anything else, I mean, 
you know, usually I can talk for forever and ever, but I want to give you guys this platform to to tell everyone all about it. I mean, we have a over 100 people here, which is like absolutely incredible for this current market. And even more people are going to watch this recording of it. So I want to make sure you guys have the chance to get all the good alpha out, like, you know, convince people that they want to mint or for people, you know, that can't mint and don't have a whitelist spot to, you know, buy off the secondary. So. And also, fun fact, we actually created uh, one of our onesies inspired by Gojira. We actually going to call it Gojira as well. That needs to be the one that I have to, that I wear, right? Yeah, and yeah, so we are so hoping that, uh, you know, uh, you guys can one day play our game in the server, in the Discord server, you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah, let me, let me drop the link to, uh, of the Gojira design. Yeah, oh, drop, drop, drop in that voice chat channel. Yeah. Oh yeah, there it is, and Phil. Put it in there. Inspired by Zoroku and Rick. We love it. <laughs> yeah. I love that thing. I think it's so cool. I love the gun that's just like an actual like Gajira that just shoots lasers. It's like absolutely incredible, honestly. Not just yeah. that though, right? I mean the NFTs themselves, like it's not just a moving 3D NFT, but it also every NFT comes with sound, is that right? Yeah. So uh if you guys watch the uh, gameplay in our brand video, you can actually hear them. Uh, making sounds and you know when they die they make a fat sound <laughs> <laughs> just all around a lot of fun so, someone was asking so could you guys also oh, right. sorry go ahead no you got yeah, it so could you guys also explain a little bit you know so just to be very clear so who um the whole idea is that whoever if you're holding a moonzy nft you're able to basically use that NFT as your playable character is that right exactly Right. And then uh, what, about, what about the ecosystem? I mean, since there's only 5,555 NFTs, does that mean there's only ever 5,555 um, players or is this open to public? Um, yeah, of course. Uh, for casual gamers, you can uh, also use uh, the characters, but uh, you can't earn money from it. Yeah. So you have to own, you have to hold the NFTs to be able to earn, correct? Yes, correct. Otherwise, you can still play casual gaming. It's fine. You can still choose some of the characters, but maybe there's some limitation to some characters because, of course, we want to uh, make sure that holders can benefit as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Very yes, cool. so uh, the game will be available for everyone to play. And uh, for your question, um, there won't be just 5,555. Yes, the main collection will be 5,555. Uh, but we do have this system called the summoning system. So... Uh, it's actually inside our gatebook where we have a white paper where actually do a detailed explanation of what it's summoning all about. Uh, it's where you can actually summon new moons to be out. So that's a very cool thing that we're very excited about as well. Awesome. Yeah, so um, I'm trying to grab some of the questions from the chat here. And so uh, Zora asks, uh, how is... How is Moonsy planning to stand out in the midst of all these NFTs coming out with games as utility right now? Uh, I can answer this quickly. Uh, mainly, we are not just focusing on make, making our game better in a way. Uh, we want to make sure that it's fun because, you know, like I mentioned earlier, that no game is fun without friends. So um, it's going to be like a social game where you're going to ask your friend to come play and that will make any game fun. So uh, with that, uh, with the com tight community, I think that will make our game uh, more unique than the rest. Definitely. And the cute vibe for it and just kind of like a, it's kind of like welcoming for everyone, you know, it's, uh, it, it kind of speaks to, you know, kids and adults and just like the fun, just like have a good time. And um, yeah, I think that you guys have done like a really good job with them. Yeah, in fact, one of the AMA the other day, uh, we had uh, was this dad that tell us that um, his daughter uh saw saw our twitter and and asked uh can they can she play the game as well then uh, the father was interested and really want to get a white list to get the nft <laughs> that's awesome yeah so, so oh yeah i remember that <laughs> yeah i think that was actually in the unfiltered one i remember that that guy came up and was asking about that that was like a really cool thing and it kind of opened my eyes up to another part of the you know why it's going to be so accessible is because it speaks to more than just like adults and people who like you know are like nft collectors it's more about a family thing and i think we need to kind of uh as the nft space as a whole needs to kind of like you know, circle a little bit more around that instead of kind of drifting away and doing these like, you know, even to the PFP projects with the content that they have that some of the stuff is just like not even suitable for kids to even see, you know, let alone like, you know, collect and be a part of. So in your in your opinion, I know the game hasn't come out yet, but do you think that kids like under the age of eight years old, would you think they would be able to play it? Is it like, is it that easy? 
yeah yeah of course definitely and you know like they say that the future is the king where the kid when the kids grow up they're going to be the future and they are going to be the king and this kids gonna grow up playing this game you know like how when we were young we would play new pets we play uh, uh they call sega game so these kids are gonna grow up playing this game and yep someone was asking how i think one of, go ahead sorry I, I think one of the things that's understated here as well is you know because in, in terms of a key differentiator uh, from a team perspective is that you know you guys have been building this game for many many months now right so it's not a case of um you know you're minting first to gather funds and then developing the game right like, when is the game anticipated to be playable? So, um, so actually, for post min, we're actually, actually like you know before even before the min, we've already like created the game, like what you mentioned. So post min, we'll be expecting our mini games already. Yep. So right, we first so really how many games we will feature is like the fun knockout royal, and then where Moonzy's like characters can race through like those ridiculous obstacles like for example like stumble guys and etc like just fun mini games and then after that we release our um um pre um pre alpha uh, our royal um pre alpha release which fa features the battle royal right so one oh, of the key differentiators so, sorry come again no so what so what i gather here is one of the key differentiators here is you know standing apart from other, all the other projects that they claim to have a game is that you know your game is actually ready right it's playable at least like you know certain modes are right and it's not you know a 2d pixel you know playboy or uh, sorry a game boy you know 1990s type of version of a game right it's something that is functional and that people can actually expect um you know that that's ready and that is already a key differentiator um to many different projects like that claim to have a game coming out yeah exactly and cool. actually uh i'm part of a lot of like uh other nft projects that build on promise so i find that a little bit uh disheartening because i post mean i still have to wait like a couple of months but for us we actually started building a game since uh almost last year <laughs> so for us we don't build on promise we actually deliver post mean so this is something that uh we offer and it's really differentiate us from other projects that are built on promise yeah so, but I, I, like uh, a, as like a timeline though, like what, what do you think like for like a timeline, uh, like after you guys mint, because some people are wondering, because, you know, Braindom, um, Lieutenant Dan actually kind of made a good point. He said Braindom, for example, had gameplay videos that made it seem like the game was out, but they still haven't released any kind of game. And then, you know, like, you know, they like, you just don't want people to fall into this the trap of like thinking like, oh, they got gameplay, so it's going to come out soon. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, several months later, there's no game. <clears throat> So the pixel line. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> for us, right, actually post review you can really participate in the game. So that is something that uh we make sure of. That's why we uh strategically put uh our main date at this period of time as well. And yeah, because we we couldn't even mean earlier because we don't want people to wait for the games, right? <laughs> for us, the moment post review, you should be able to participate in the game. So this is uh something that we are gonna build and we actually gonna deliver yeah i i can't wait to see all of you guys joining us to play in the game because it's really gonna be fun uh i actually participated and i already played and tested out the game and it's really adorable guys mark my words that's that's awesome hey guys uh hey. it's queen here I, I just have uh one question yeah go ahead all right uh first off i want to say uh what's up jira fam um Moonzy, you know I'm down for y'all. So I know we've talked about a lot of pros um, of the Moonzy uh, project. Can you tell me a little bit about errors that y'all ran into um, coming into the NFT space trying to make Moonzy? Um, a little about the cons that you face um, while doing this project. Hi. Um, so you're asking about the cons, right? Just kind of like the adversity that you've kind of faced while you, uh, you know, like, you know, you, you, we've talked a lot about all the good things and all the good things that have happened, you know, during the development. But what are some of the like road, you know, road bumps that you might have uh, ran into or some of the things that made it a little bit more difficult? I guess for us, it's really more like because, uh, I mean, there's a trend of PFP, right? So at the start, we have this issue where, oh, shit, uh, ours can't be, you know, as attractive as uh, PFP because we are really more, you uh, utilize driven uh uh so that's one of the challenge and you know like how this whole this whole trend of like maybe uh uh 
human, sometimes Godzilla, sometimes uh, you know mo monkeys, apes. But ours is a bit cute. So uh, so we are, we have been trying to uh, see how to please the market, but then also I learned that we can't please everyone. So we just want to focus on people who are uh, actually interested in our design and the whole uh, game structure. Okay. Okay. Um. Coming when you first made the project, or when you got with your team to um, get together and make the Moonzy name, did you have any doubts that it would go this well, or did you just expect it to go this well as quick as it did? Uh, definitely, we we had a few options. Uh, initially, our first name was called uh One Z Party. Uh, but then we realized uh it doesn't really uh, resonate with uh people because there's no term that people can associate to. So uh, we came up with the word moon and then moonzi, you know. Uh, yeah, and of course, one onesie party is a bit too lengthy. <laughs> yeah, we were really pleasantly surprised by the by the community because um, no one can expect this kind of um, hype. Um, when you start a project, you really deliver what what you you think is the best, right? Like for for art director, he thinks like um, this is absolutely cute, but some other people may may might not might not find that um, the same, but. We were really pleasantly surprised by by the number of people who who really like um the Munsi and uh, yeah, so I think um, and we were, we were really glad that uh, we chose this name because uh, it kind of made people always think that it, I mean there's this phrase that you've been hearing every day now this is Munsi to the moon Munsi to the moon you know so it becomes our catchphrase. <laughs> And it's very synonymous with the space too, about everyone being like, oh, what's going to happen to the price? To the moon, you know? So it's it's cool that you guys kind of like touched on that. You have any other questions yeah. though, Queen? No, that'll be all for me. I'm about to get in trouble because I'm in the military and I'm hiding in the restroom right now. So <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Well, Thank you so much for the question. You should join yeah, the, love you, out, you should join the uh, server. I think that Phil might have a little uh, a present for you for coming up here and uh, trying to get in trouble by the military. I think that we might be able to take care of you. What do you think, Phil? Most definitely. Most definitely. All right. I love y'all. Like she, she's from our community. I already recognize her. Yes. <laughs> she, she was playing trivia with us earlier this morning. Oh. <laughs> awesome. All right. Nice. Y'all cool, cool, cool. have a nice day. You too. Don't get in trouble. Good luck. All right, I'm, gonna bring, I'm gonna there's a lot of questions in chat um i'm trying to ask them as they go uh, someone was asking if there's a potential to be a onesie for uh kids of course uh it's gonna be for everyone <laughs> i love it i love it all right i just brought someone up here if you want to come off mute and go ahead and ask a question feel free to hey hey um thanks for having me guys and thanks for doing this monzies uh, just wanted to ask you guys whether what you thought the narrative was about free mints these days and how teams, uh, and larger question was how do teams stay incentivized to continue building with that kind of a, you know, structure with very minimal uh, funds that they take up front. Hey, maybe I will take this question. So actually, uh... These days, we notice that uh, there is quite a lot of free mint project. So for free mint project is, uh, I mean, the fund that gathered is really very minimal because they are banging on the royalties. And and if you don't have a good alpha, for example, uh, recently got these free mint projects, right? Because they, there's an alpha saying that they are tied to Yuga Lab. That's why it got pumped. But if you don't have any alpha tying to uh, an existing project, right? It's almost impossible for you to raise the fund, right? So for us, right, uh, luckily for us, uh, although we are not going for free mint, but we are funded by Moonlight Capital and it's backed by investors. So for us, is uh, we are still going to deliver regardless of the bin results. So this is what we're going to do. And we are not changing to free mint because I feel that uh, because we need to incentivize players that actually want to participate in the play and earn. And those that do not wish to join the play, and they can actually play the game for free. So technically, it's sort of there is a free mean tier to it. <laughs> and ultimately, we need to build our liquidity pool to so that of course play and earn. You need the liquidity pool, so a uh, part of our main is going to be in it. Um, it makes it makes sense. How, how much of how much of it of the mint is going to be in the liquidity pool? And um, I think there's some questions in voice chat or in the voice chat channel asking about tokenomics. I mean. Um, I guess it's a two-part question here, just for me to paraphrase. I mean, number one, it's like, how much uh, are you guys thinking of uh, the mint is going to be in the liquidity pool? And second, could you also, you know, talk a bit more about the tokenomics and how it's going to work? 
Yeah, so actually uh, all, all the numbers is clearly stated in our roadmap and white paper. So I will just uh, lay out here. <laughs> and we are actually putting uh, 40% to back to the community uh, liquidity pool and if you if you take a look at our tokenomics it will it will clearly show how is the 40 percent being spent yeah so this uh this is on a link that i sent earlier on the tokenomic pages and maybe i will have a can code to briefly explain how how we derive this tokenomics right yeah uh, I guys, I just dropped the uh, gift book here uh, in the voice chat you guys can check for more information about tokenomics yeah but to quickly summarize i think um, a, a large part of um, the funding that we get from um, the, our community, um, our mint, is will be will be used for um, community airdrop, lock drop, ecosystem funding. Um, the play and earn is a big part of it. Um, so we can find this in our um, tokenomics uh, on Gitbook uh, uh, page because there's sub pages, right? So just wanted to make sure. Um, there's also staking rewards and. Um, um, we are also paying our game developers through um, part of this uh, mid revenue. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit uh, it's, it's a little bit far far ahead to discuss the exact numbers here because we are actually looking to to um, add in a lot of our own um, invested funds. Um, we have been investing in uh, Munsi development. Uh, but we are expecting to continually um, add in as we see the need to. So I don't think like um, uh, th uh, there's a need to like lay out the exact numbers here because the, the team is extremely like dedicated to make sure all these are built out as necessarily um, as um, sustainable as possible. I hope that answer your question. Um, I think you're drop out of stage, right? Like, is there any more questions from you, or is that like cool? Oh, I asked that question. I just, I'm just. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, let's kick Rick off of here. <laughs> oh my god! I'm so sorry. I thought it wasn't. No fun. No fun, G. I'm I'm gonna go to bed now. Yeah. So I just want to let everyone know, though, like, well, you know, during this thing, um, during the AMA right now with the marketplace actually has 50 uh, moonless spots that we put in there for a, a very reasonable price. And I think that if you guys are really enjoying yourself here and you aren't uh, blessed with one of the spots that we're going to randomly give out here in a little bit, um, definitely hop in there and spend your Jira token because it's definitely um, we kind of timed it so that you guys could learn about it, hear about this AMA, and then you can decide if you wanted to buy one of the whitelists. So I think that's really cool. I wanted to kind of direct you guys' attention towards that. But um, someone, we got you up on stage. If you want to go ahead and ask a question, feel free to, brother. Thanks for coming up. Uh, hey, guys. First of all, thanks for having me up here. Uh, and all I wanted to ask was, like, is there anything like uh, different NFTs or different moonsies have different traits and abilities? And if yes, don't you think so that it will make a game a little bit of paid win game? It yeah, so actually we face uh, this kind of questions often. So for the for the PvP aspect, all of the weapons you get will be the weapons of your uh, your moonsie. So for us, it's our job to make it very balanced and for for those that with uh one off trades and those that with the drones, uh, it will not affect the gameplay so much in terms of the PVP, but it will affect your gameplay in terms of PVE. So we will have boss fight. So people with one off and with uh the drones will actually have a little bit benefit because ultimately uh it's it's like a catch up on right NFT. So you get you get a good trades. It it has to show off somewhere. And but for the PVP wise, we are making sure that the game is extremely balanced. So we will have uh, our game developer to test with and we will actually test with our community. So this is something that we'll go through before we actually, yeah. That makes sense, absolutely. And thank you so much, bro. Thanks for the question, man. <laughs> hey, thank you. Do you have any other questions? Are you good? Um, yes, uh, I'm good. I'm good, bro. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. Hey, Traff, brought you up here. Go ahead. How you doing? Doing all right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. So I, I was a little bit interested in the cross-marketing between the, like, in the mobile game uh, towards the NFT 
and web three versus web two thing and also had that like how you will handle maybe underage uh, playing the game uh, and the whole social aspect uh, on that end. So uh, you, you mean by uh, how the interaction between the Web 2 and the Web 3 uh, in our games, right? Like, for example, the social aspect to it and also the NFT holders? Is that what you mean? Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So, and like understanding a little bit how how the regular uh, like mobile players will play uh, and how like um, yeah will you cross market uh, like investments in in secondary tokens in the app and yeah the integration and and how you how you plan to deal with uh, yeah, the relationship between web 2 and web 3 Okay, so uh, actually this question is a little bit technical and how we intend to integrate is actually all of the players will be part of our game and be it whether they are NFT holders or they are non-NFT holders. So uh, they will be able to play with each other and only the NFT holders will be be uh, yielding the moon gem. So, but for the other players, they will have their own stats, right? They have, they have their own win rate and stuff. So... They can use this win rate to actually rent an NFT for a from a player or from an NFT holder that do not wish to participate in a game but just want to hold the NFT. So this will actually help those non-gamers NFT holders to earn their moon gem, their own earn their share of moon gem. So this is uh how we intend to cross a cross kind of a platform become Web two point five and Web three. You know. Yes, I guess uh. I guess what Phil is trying to say is that we actually cater to two crowds of people. So uh, we cater to those that are not in the NFT space at all because the game is free to play for everyone. So it will be on the App Store, it will be on mobile so that anyone can actually play the game. Uh, however, we also cater to the NFT space. So people that want to yield the Moon Gems for rewards, uh, for stuff like that, for the summoning, uh, you can actually do so. Uh, that's where the Web3 comes in. So that's where you have the minting process. Uh, you get your NFT, and then your NFT will have certain traits. Uh, you can actually use rewards, staking, stuff like that. So we actually cater to two different groups. That's great. That's great. Uh, a great answer. So, uh, and my next question is basically: so you said that you had some outside investors, right? Uh, what What are the KPIs and what are the the things that that they want you to achieve in order to continue investing and and what are you planning to do with the potentially excess uh, dev team uh, when when the gameplay is uh, is final uh, or are they on contract? Yeah, so for the KPI from like the investors and stuff, right? That's your question, right? So uh, actually all of us have one goal. So for us, our goal is to make uh, Munzi a brand and make Munzi as global as possible, make the player base as large as possible. So this is uh this is what we try to spend our effort on, and also uh for us we think that uh we want to ride on the play and earn trend, right? For example, during the COVID period, there's a lot of people actually survive via just Axie Infinity and other games. So this is something that uh we think that we can ride on, and yeah. So ultimately, our main goal for all of the investors and even the team is to make this a uh, global brand. People can recognize Munzi on the street and stuff. Oh, thanks for... Uh, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. thanks, for uh, thanks for a good MA. Take care, guys. Awesome, Trav. Yeah, Thank you care. so much. Tish, I brought you up here. You want to come off mute? How you doing, buddy? Hey, hey, how's it going? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Amazing. Good, man. Cool, doing cool. Good. Um, yeah, I guess my, my, my question was really just, uh, and you kind of touched on it a little bit um, uh, just earlier, but I'm just curious about like the different platforms you'll be offering your gameplay on, um, and like do you have plans to expand across different platforms? Um, and then secondly, just curious uh, if, if you do have uh, plans to do any sort of like eSport tournaments or include like Web2 gamers, like bridging that gap a little bit to have more of like the, you know, traditional gamers kind of transitioning over to this um and just curious if you have any plans to um to do any of that stuff 
Okay, so uh, for the first part of the question, I think you are asking whether we are, uh, whether we want to participate. I mean, like make Bunzi like a competitive uh gameplay and allowing esports players to be on board. Mm -hmm. That was the question, right? Okay, so actually, uh, for us, we really believe that we sh we really believe to actually uh reward high skill caps player, right? So uh, we don't want people with high skill caps to be uh neglected. So ultimately, uh. We also want the game to be easy to play and for anyone of any age to play. I mean, yeah. So, uh, actually, this topic has brought out to the uh with the team a lot of times. Uh, and we are actually trying to think of a way to expand it into the esports, like host tournaments for people to participate mm -hmm. and earn cash from it. So this is something that uh we are in in the phase of building. But then to in order to reach there, we have to start with our game first, right? So to see how we can balance it. And how we can uh integrate some esports uh elements into it first. So yeah, this is definitely part of our plan, but then it's not our immediate plan. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, it's like more long term for sure. Uh, I get yeah. that. Um, and and are you uh, like I guess the first part of my question was just about like the the devices or different um, places you'll be able to play your uh, the game. Oh, yeah, is it yeah. just um, mobile only or um, mobile browser, mobile app, um, and will it be just like a beta at first, like a slide or something, and then? eventually it'd be like a live production app yeah so actually our game will be released on mobile first but we are not uh we are not just uh gonna release there because uh for for us we're gonna do we we target mobile first because uh we spend most of our game development on mobile first so when the game has stabilized and we are actually gonna open for cross platform so this is something that we're gonna do uh in a very near future actually Thank you. Yeah, that's 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 it. That's all my questions. Appreciate yeah, the time. Thank awesome. you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for coming up and ask questions. Um, for sure. Yeah. If anyone else, I might have missed some. If you want to re-ask something, if you're not able to come up and ask something, if you want to ask something in chat, or if you want to request, I'm more than happy to. Um, I tried to ask a lot of questions myself and Rick <clears throat> to cover everything. But if we missed anything, definitely, because I want you guys to definitely be educated to understand if you guys want to, you know, purchase this off of the you know, whitelist marketplace, or if you want to go into the server and maybe spend some time there and do some karaoke and all that good stuff, or even just buy it off the secondary, because <clears throat> I, for one, you know, obviously will be minting this because I used to play this, uh, the game, the game, I think that it's kind of it's modeled a little bit after it's like Fall Guys. And I remember looking at that game and being like, wow, that's like so stupid and so lame. And then when I played it, I was like, holy shit, this is actually so addicting and fun. It's like the complete opposite of what I thought it was. And that's definitely what uh, Moonzy is touching on, I think, for this, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Because I, honestly, I just can't wait to kick Rick's ass, and that's kind of the main thing. <clears throat> yeah, just to add on, I, I, I personally like it as well. I also play um Summer Guys, and also play Crab Games. If you guys play any, yep. And uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Unite. Also, all these games are like considered social games, but you actually need friends to play. Otherwise, it will not be fun. <laughs> yeah. I think um yeah. one of the things here. I mean, obviously, you know where. Mm -hmm. You know, we're part of the team, but you know, there's a big difference here between buying an NFT project that said they're going to build something versus, you know, and then you obviously get iffy about holding the NFT, right? Because, you know, if nothing's really delivered, you can't really do anything with it. You're just holding a JPEG, and you get a Discord community. Then, actually, the longer nothing happens, um, then the floor, I was concerned about the floor because that's the only thing that they're focused on, right? That's the only thing that they can focus on. Whereas, you know, with a project like this, if, if, the, if the game is available, right, then what you're investing into is obviously a character that you can use and implement and actually play the game with, right? And like Zero Cool said, you know, we're just going to hold it so we kick each other's asses when we have nothing to do. <laughs> so, you know, at least, you know, you're getting something here where, you know, you, you can actually call it yours, right? Obviously, you can switch it, you can get more, do whatever you want with it. Um, but I think one of the questions that, you know, the community has is, you know, you said the game is on mobile. And obviously, right now, you know, NFTs are largely computer-based, right? So how, how are people going to be able to, um, you know, move their, use their own NFT, you know, their avatar on their mobile? I mean, I think one of the latest things I've seen is where, you know, we've seen, I, I guess, uh, NFTs being able to access, be, be accessible on mobile and functional is Steppen, which is on Soul, right? Which is like the move to earn platform, right? Um, where you can earn their tokens by just walking each day with your own shoe. So, I mean, how do you bridge that on ETH? Or how, how do you kind of bridge that on ETH? Yeah, so those will be um, part of the backend infrastructure. Um, 
because everything um, has to be done through MetaMask and MetaMask on mobile is known to have um, some kind of uh, issues. Um, um, we may or may not be able to use the NFT like, directly as we want um, in our web experience, but we'll make sure like our holders, our, our testers will be able to have a, a smooth experience so that it is largely similar to what they already know. So we are, we are all very familiar with like switching chains, um, working with the MetaMask extension. So the experience will be as close to tied to that as possible. Yeah. Well, hopefully that answers uh, one of your questions or somebody in the community's questions. And then is this available on both Android and iPhone? Yes, absolutely. But uh, we'll be starting with um, one of the platform. Uh, we are iOS focused for now, but we are moving to cross platform as well. Love that. That's that's good stuff. Um, let's see. If we're trying to get some more questions, uh, I think did anyone ask us the the one about the micro uh, incorporating micro transactions in any way, or will it be supported by secondary market transactions plus sponsors and merch? Uh, sorry, could you please repeat? Here, I just, I just tagged Phil in, uh, in, in the question, if you want to look at okay. that one. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, uh, for us, right, we're going to uh, integrate our marketplace. So how, how the marketplace will work, right, is basically, uh, you can actually purchase, uh, stuff like merch, uh, equipments, and even to summon your new, what's it called? Your second gen via our marketplace. So this marketplace uh, basically is fully integrated with uh, the use of Moonjam. So yeah, this is something that we already building and yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to drop the Discord link into the chat again. And uh, I just want to let people know that um, they've been keeping an eye on all the people bringing good vibes in here. But I want some people to, if you guys go into the chat and are, you know, spend some time in there, I think that if you're from the Jira fam that you might get, a, you know, might get a special extra little look-see um, if you come and, uh, you know, spread good energy and you're participating in there leading up to the Mint and everything like that. Um, I think Phil and the rest of the gang were saying that they were definitely more than happy to uh, help out the good people, if you know what I mean. <laughs> good night. Good night. There's a question that just got uh, pinged again. Uh, I don't know if you saw that one, the tokenomics question. It said, uh, I read the white paper, saw the tokenomics for renting. Will 80% share to renters be sustainable? Are there plans for variable percent settings like many other projects? Yeah, the renting system um, is largely tied to um, how we design the, the summoning as well, because um, there's 5,555 Munsees for now, but we are expecting our player base to grow exponentially. So this will play a part in creating like a sustainable, a dynamic kind of um, token pricing. So we don't want a, a case where we run into like exponential increase in price um, unnecessarily. Like we want to um, um, keep it as sustainable because we are, after all, like play and earn. We are focusing on on the play, but at the same time, we want to reward our users. Or when they want to exit the game, um, they have a chance to um to to um like cash out um their their earnings and um yeah and yield their rewards for being a great player and being a great community holder. Awesome. I think that's a good answer for the question. Um. Is there anybody else that has their, no one else has had their hand raised, it's been actually like really an interactive AMA compared to a lot of the other ones that I've been having. It's been kind of a, a tough sell to have people and it's like 30, 40, 50 people maximum been coming to the AMAs as of the recent market and we're up over 100 and we've been up over 100 since almost the start of this AMA. So I hope everyone's getting their questions answered. I hope everyone's being educated on what you know, what you want to do uh, as far as buying on the secondary or if you want to go on the marketplace and buy something. Like I said, it's like a, such an affordable price considering what they're delivering, having a game coming out not too terribly long after the mint, having it be able to be played with your family. Because one of the biggest things I think that with myself in general, and I know that like, you know, Rick and other people who have uh, kids is that, you know, this NFT 
hobby, quote unquote, hobby job, you want to call it, that we've all been, you know, enthralled with for the last several months, if not year, is that, you know, your wife and your kids are all like, they can't participate because, you know, they're not out there earning the ETH, they don't have the profile picture, they're not on Discord and whatnot. And I think that the thing that Moonzy has done really well, and I've been really impressed with that I didn't even have to advise them on is to make this more of a, you know, in, like including everybody, you know, the whole entire family, you know, even from the wife to the kids to everybody can participate in this. And, you know, even if they can't buy the NFT, you can still play together. And I think that's really cool because a lot of the, you know, a lot of these NFTs kind of gatekeep a bit. And it's like, hey, you got to spend, you know, 0. 0.1 or you got to spend like, you know, what the secondary sale, uh, prices are and whatnot to be able to play it. And this one, it, it basically allows everyone to play and i just like love that aspect and it's a whole family thing and i think we need to start touching on that more and more instead of these profile pictures and staking and pl uh, play to earn instead of play and earn and this one's more of have fun and earn i think is the best way of saying this because you know you're going to be out there just sh shooting your guns and slapping people off and all the fun cute noises and all the merch and if you haven't watched the brand video i would go and watch the brand video again because it's like it's so well done and when you have production quality like that that's in-house that's able to be uh, put out whenever it's actually really impressive so many projects out there <clears throat> excuse me outsource and i think that kind of takes away from you know the the feel of it and like uh jace was saying is that this is all in-house and made by the mamunzi team and that it gives it so much more of a higher quality and a more like more depth to it and just kind of through and through it's moonsy and i just like love that so much and it's been such an honor to be up here with you guys and to be hosting you guys and to be a part of the moonsy team for as long as i've been and uh just want to thank you guys like i said it's even even chutoro with a you know with a bat the, the, her voice like she is even showed up came out here on the stage even introduced herself even though she can't even talk just shows you like how much they care about the Jira fam and wanted to make sure that the whole team was out here and they respected, um, you know, just the, the the honor of being up here in front of you guys, one of the best communities in the entire space. And no one can argue with that, honestly, because we are like, you know, Jira fam is just the community is the thing that we've always been harped on. And the reason why our floor price is so high is because people have bought in and really respect what we're doing here. And it's because of you guys, all of the amazing people out there in the crowd. And I just want to say thank you so much, everyone who took time out of their busy schedule to come out here. And like I said, is hit up the link to get into the Moonzy server. Let them know you're from the Jira fam. Spread those good vibes. Phil at the beginning even said, you bring good vibes, you get a, you can get a whitelist. And that is the meta for the moon list right now. And, and they're trying to make sure that all the really good people are able to mint and mint's coming up in about a week. Um, so guys, get ready, get prepared, get on that marketplace, buy, use your Jira token to buy a whitelist. It's going to be a good stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. And if you're going to the Singapore meetup for Jira, guess what other team is going to be in Singapore? That's right, the Moonzy team. And so we're going to definitely going to be planning something and having a great time. They've already had a meetup pre-mint that had over 100 people. That's actually crazy. There's so many projects that I know that have meetups post-Mint, like a month after Mint, and they don't even have 100 people. That should speak volumes to what the community is and how they've already bought in. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. If you guys want to say any last words, if you guys want to just come out and say bye, say your thank yous, and then we can wrap it up. Um, it's been a pleasure, guys. Thank you so much for having us, man. Thanks for the kind words. We love you guys. And I know that Kojira is one of the projects that we look up to. And yeah, <laughs> this is something that uh, we want to build as well. And yeah, thank you so much. And we had a good time. And thanks for all the questions. <laughs> Thank you Bloody so man. much, Zeraku and Rick. Like we really thank you for your like, I mean, your time to for today, and we thank all the Jira fans. You know, Jira and Moonzy, we love your community. That's why we really look up to Jira. Like what Phil mentioned, like the community is like super strong, and we really like want it in our Moonzy community as well. And that's why we have been always like community based and all thinking about the community. And we really, really thank all of you for coming and joining this AMA for us today. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Hello. everyone. Thank you, thank you. I'm just looking forward to meeting uh, Zero Ku in NFT. Yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm so excited. This oh is energy and I'm like, oh I'm, my god. I'm gonna do the Naruto <laughs> Run Mirror Challenge with Oh you my god. Day. Yes, yes. Let's record. <laughs> hey, hey, let's record something, Jace. That'd be so much fun. And you, we got to go to the club because it's uh, I can actually cut up the dance floor like you've never seen before. 
Yo, I'm so looking Yo. forward, man. Yeah, hell yeah. All righty, guys. Thank you so much. I'll let you guys go. I know you guys got other things to do. Everyone's super busy, but from the bottom of our hearts, thank you guys so much, and we'll see you guys on the moon. <laughs>